And we are live. Hello. Good afternoon, world. Good morning to some. Good afternoon to others. Good evening to a few of you. How are you doing? I'm James Bradley. I am going to be your host for the next hour or so. I am the Liftoff Global Network co-founder or one of the Liftoff Global Network co-founders. And today we're going to be discussing the best social media strategy for your film projects. Um, something that's uh, kind of it, it kind of eludes filmmakers from time to time. I think a lot of filmmakers tend to tend to shy away from the marketing aspects of their films. And um, nowadays, social media has has kind of built a bit of a controversial stigma attached to it, um, especially for people of, of certainly my generation. I'm 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 approaching forty, and um, a lot of people in my generation are kind of on the edge of millennial X, on the edge of, sorry, on the edge of generation X and on the edge of millennial, they're kind of seeing social media now as something that they don't necessarily feel is a positive thing in their lives. Um, but as we're seeing quite recently with the things like COVID-19 and stuff, it's actually become something that we sort of depend on, um, especially on building on building and maintaining relationships with those that are far, that are far away from us. Um, that's social media on a personal level and social media on a, on a private individual level. But social media on a business level and um, very much so on a project level on, on, on finding customers or finding audience or something like that, it's something that kind of needs to be looked at because there are ways and reasons that we use social media for positive things, like, for example, if you have various types of interests and stuff. So it is, it is, it is still a very, very, very powerful tool. Um, Liftoff have been using it for, for, for over 10 years since our uh, since our inception um, back in 2010 and in 2011 in, in the cusp of 2010 to 2011 and um, we've seen we've seen steady growth in several different areas and we really do think that there's a lot of of potential here um, for filmmakers um, undiscovered potential especially filmmakers at at this level at your level um, and I, I feel very much that there are some filmmakers that do it really, really, really well. And there are some filmmakers that don't do it at all. And the ones that do it really well tend to be the ones that get the packed festival screenings, tend to be the ones that get the packed premiere screenings, tend to be the ones that are actually able to go on and sell their work. So it's very important to remember that this that this aspect of, of social media is not your individual social media. This is something else. This is using social media as a tool to find audience for your projects, find audience for your businesses, and ultimately enable you to earn money from the creative content you create. Okay, so let's have a quick shout out to the chat rooms. We've got Angela, we've got uh, Nisithithith. Oh, I'm awful at pronouncing people's names. And we've got Santa, uh, we have Akash, we have Karen Mark, uh, Carmichael. Hi, Car uh, hi, Catherine, how you doing? Karen, Catherine, how you doing? We've got Neil as well. Hi, ne uh, Neil, it's good to see you guys. Really good to see you guys. We've got some, uh, we've got some nice, viewing, nice viewing numbers at the moment. Um, we will do the social media um, workshop first, and then we'll move on to updating you guys with the current festival that's been running this week. We've had a lot of votes come in over the last 24 hours and we'll be giving a few highlights to certain films that will be, that'll be present in those as we go forward. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's uh, have a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's my cup of coffee in my Superman mug. Lovely cup of coffee, just to start things off. Yes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, great. I hope you're all sat there with a cup of coffee as well or a glass of wine. Or a beer. Could it, you know, it all works. Ronan Burke, nice to see you in the chat room. Okay, great. Let's crack on. Oh, it's too hot anyway. Okay, great. Excited for Manchester liftoff results. Yeah, cool. Good to good to good to see you guys in there, Akash. Um Claire will answer your questions in the in the in the chat room if you need things um, answered, like the question that's coming through there. Yep, really cool. Such a beautiful festival and amazing networking platform. Thank you, Akash. It's lovely to hear that. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to be doing so much more with with regards to online and building building as much as much kind of um, interactivity between filmmakers as possible. Um, it's always been our our aim to get that going, and the Liftoff Network platform, which we'll talk about at the very end, very important. We also have we also have certain aspects of the of the um, 
of the actual main Facebook page that we do. We kind of reach out to that. We also have member screenings at our specific festivals that actually happen physically. Um, and also the online festivals that we're going to be doing up until God knows when. Um, we're going to be looking at ways to kind of build that in. So um, the Manchester stuff that's coming up, really excited about that. It's going to be some fantastic things that we're going to be doing with Tokyo Liftoff as well. Really can't wait for it. It's going to be it's going to be great. And I think it's going to help us all to understand this new paradigm of online and how how all filmmakers and film festivals can actually earn money and and ena enable filmmakers to kind of enable our filmmakers to kind of go out there and build their careers just by producing and, and creating content online. Um, it's really important. I think it's I think it's vital. It's the future, definitely. And it's something that we really must be pushing forward. So, yeah, without further ado, let's crack on. So like everything in the process of success within this particular section of the indie film marketplace, it's really important to start as early as possible. That's key. So, of course, there'll be people here that have already got film projects up and there'll be things that they'll look at from this particular presentation and they'll think, OK, I can I can adapt that to my film now or I should have adapted to that that to my film earlier on. Of course, um, it is it is really really important to remember that you aren't one film if you're a filmmaker you need to be prolific the best filmmakers are and if you if you keep working and keep producing projects as often as possible working within the paradigms of your boundaries so like right now for example COVID-19 everyone's at home right make a film just do something build something do it on an iPhone do whatever you'll find that the the more constricted you are with the with the with the tools that you have the more creative you'll become it's quite it's quite something. It's like the paper and pencil, right? That fantastic drawings can be done with just a paper and pencil. Fantastic films can be made like Tangerine with just an iPhone. So it's important to remember that that um, you aren't one film. You can create constantly. And even if you're stuck with in, in the in the troves of a current project, you can you can adapt certain aspects of these strategies into into your current workings right now and kick off from wherever you are but definitely starting as early as possible is usually key but regardless of what stage you're at with your project there is always more to learn and implement so let's get let's get cracking okay so why social media okay so the power of specifics so social media has has the power to literally pinpoint individuals that are interested in certain things um you could you could go all out and be like right okay my film is about um girl meets boy in Bracknell and there's lots of shots of Bracknell I've done loads of shots of Bracknell because I really love Bracknell it's where I grew up it's where my family are from blah 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 blah. I'm not from Bracknell I'm from Plymouth but if you did that you could you could reach out to people that are obsessed with Bracknell and not just people that are obsessed with Bracknell as a whole you can get people that are obsessed with the a famous church a particular pub a certain landmark Anything like that, a certain type of people. Maybe there's maybe there's a certain um, a certain type of um, of cake, or I don't know. Why I'm thinking cake probably because I'm hungry. Um, a certain type of cake that's made there, or whatever. I mean, I'm thinking of, of of Bramley, and I'm thinking of all different sorts of places in the UK. But there are there are there are always niches and specifics inside the work that we create, and that will always al allow us to open up to new audiences via social media. And by being active on social media and by finding these these specifics that, that correlate to the content that you're creating, you can generate audience from it. It's really, really important to understand that the power of specifics is key to your film online. Viral marketing. Yep. Social media is all about viral marketing. What is viral marketing? So literally viral as in your throat. It's it's the word of mouth marketing. It's saying I recommend this. That's why it's really good. This is why influencers exist on Instagram. It's why um, stakeholders have been replaced by influencers almost on, especially in, in regards to creative output. Um, there are so many, so many people out there that will recommend things that will link on to. Um, I definitely remember in my early days of, of being on Facebook, people being like, you've got to watch Breaking Bad. I would never have heard of Breaking Bad if it wasn't for social media. Um, and I know that many people were, were talking about Breaking Bad and I was kind of thinking, should I watch that? Shouldn't I watch it? And I loved, I loved the show. I thought it was great. But it had the, it, it would never have gotten to me if social media hadn't existed. I mean, maybe it would have done, 
but it still would have had to have been word of mouth. It still would have been on, on recommendations. It wasn't on Netflix. It wasn't on it wasn't on Amazon or anything like that. It was it was something that I had to I had to actively seek. I had to actively find because people had spoken about it. So viral marketing is really, really important. Getting people to talk about your content and talk about the specifics inside your content is really, really, really good at generating audience numbers. So independent power. Yeah, very important as well. You have the power with social media to create an audience, to generate continued, a continued train, a continued factory of output. Um, if you if you manage to get 10,000 followers for your production company's Facebook page, for example, because you've been creating content ac across the space of a year that have, that have hit specific notes in different in different categories and different subjects, you will be you will you will be picking up fans of your filmmaking and they'll be staying with you for the prolonged period, especially if you're prolific, if you keep making work up keep creating work, keep outputting all the time and keep working on the specifics and looking at targeting specific people within within the certain um, within the certain areas of 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 interest that exist all over the world, then the power is in your hands independently. You don't need to go to a producer to get crowdfunding. You don't need to go to to um, a, a producer to get to get funding funding. You don't need to go to to anywhere like that. You just use you use the audience that you have already to help push you forward. Audience is what everybody wants. If you can come to anyone with an audience, sorry, my phone's going off, I do apologize. If you can come to anyone with an audience, there we go. If you can come to anybody with an audience, when I say anyone, I mean sales agents, distributors, producers, anyone like that, and you already have an audience behind you, you stand so much more of a chance of getting your future work made. It's key. It's the reason why books always get turned into films. They have the audience. It's the reason why graphic novels always get turned into films. The audience is already there. If you can somehow create audience by creating shorts that, that talk about certain specifics, that highlight certain aspects of life that people are interested in, and you build a, a collection of audience behind you, you'll have power. With audience is power. And that's, that's the most important thing. Getting that audience there and getting the power into your hands is absolute key because those producers won't have that audience. You will. And you'll come to you'll come to pitches with 10,000 followers on Facebook, for example. And you'll be like, these are all the people that have been watching my films over the last three years. They um, they really they really like the kind of work that I do. Um, I know there's only 10,000 of them, but I know that if we pump in, if we pump in, say, 50K, Fifty thousand pounds into an advertising um, lookalike audience marketing mechanism into my Facebook page, we, we can turn that ten thousand into one hundred and ten thousand, probably by spending like a grand. And then if we spent fifty grand, we could turn that into maybe a million, maybe two million people. Um, that's worth its weight in gold. Okay, research and implementation. So for your future work, you can look at specifics that. Say, for example, you have a, an idea for a film and you think to yourself, right, okay, I want to make a film about the people that live on the canal. They are, they are a certain type of people that I'm really, really interested in and I, I want to make a film about them. I'm going to set it uh, on the canals of Hackney in London and I want to have it, a, I, want it I, I don't want a typical boy meets girl, I don't want that. I want something more that, that's, that's higher drama, something that's like, that's like really, really interesting, but yet, but yet bizarre. And maybe, maybe, maybe teeters on the edge of a true life story or something like that. Whatever it is, you can, you lay out your plan for your film. And then the first question you must always ask yourself, especially if you want to be a filmmaker that earns a living out of this, out of filmmaking, is you want to ask yourself, where is this audience? You can't just go, oh, everyone will like it because it, it's, it's a sea of content at the moment. It's a sea of content. You have to think of specifics. Who are the people in this film idea that you've got? Who are they? Where can you find them? Do they exist? So you can use social media to research and find audience. You may need to go a bit broader. You may need to go a little bit more specific. You might find somewhere along the lines that this particular thing that you're researching has millions of followers around the world and they're completely and utterly dedicated into anything that's created by that. 
Also another point as well, I would always look at projects on things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo that match the ideas that you're creating. Kickstarter and Indiegogo are crowdfunding websites, right? But they're also social media pages, technically. There, there are people on those, on those pages that literally exist on Kickstarter. I exist on Kickstarter. You can look me up. I've backed about 65 projects over the last year or so. I love Kickstarter. It's incredible. Built my own projects on there as well. Um, it's its own community. And it's its own community that 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 has subsections of specifics of people that are interested in things. Just go on Kickstarter and look through the history and just just type in stuff and have a look. See if there see if there are films or products or or pro other projects that match the themes and the ideas that exist inside your work. See how much they got they got they got paid. See how it all looks. See what see what's in there and what actually makes sense. Because if you don't if you don't do that kind of research, you won't necessarily know whether or not the audience is there. So it's important to do that. So you research and then you implement. You implement by having a strategy that, that, that enables the targeting of those particular people. So they come to your page, they dedicate their interest to your project, and then you lock them in as potential audience forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. OK, so. This is an example, right? I'm just going to see if this comes up okay on the on the screen because it's a little bit small here. Um, so it's a bit small. So I, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Um, what's the next bit? Here we go. Make it a little bit larger. There we go. So it, this is interest and additional interests. Amiga, Commodore 64, and retro gaming. This is something that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I love the Amiga. My Amiga is right here. I'll show you the joystick that I have. Here it is. This is the joystick for my Amiga. Um, it's an Amiga, Commodore Amiga A1200 computer. It was built in 1990, 1990 or 1989. Um, the, the A1200 that I own was built in 1994. It's a retro computer that takes floppy disks and it's old school. Um, the, the computer before that was the Commodore 64 and the, the interests that, that it kind of sits inside is retro gaming. Now, if I made a film about retro gaming or I had retro gaming in it, like Bandersnatch, for example, um, I could go on to Facebook and just use this tool, the Create an Audience tool, which is free to use. You don't have to commit anything to it. And you just you just literally type in the interests into the into the ad demographic interest and behaviors bit there. And you just click. You can even click suggest and it'll give you suggestions on there. Um, and you just define an audience. So I have to find an audience with interest, additional interest, literally just additional interest, Amiga, Commodore 64, and retro gaming. I just did Europe and it's come up with 18 million people. 18 million people specifically like the Amiga and this is an or and the Commodore 64 and retro gaming. So I can target them with a trailer for my film or some concept art for my film and I would get some likes. I'd get some followers. I would get people interested in the work that I'm doing. Now, how much does this cost? Well, let's have a little look. So for £10 total budget, £10 total budget, that's about, I think that's about $16 right now. Estimated people reached per day is between 1,800 and 5,200 people per day. And you'll spend £2.50 per day and the ad will run for four days ending on the 21st of April 2020. So it's really worth looking at paid advertising on Facebook. Um, I predict, unfortunately, I really do predict this, but I think that in the next maybe maybe three to five years, advertising on social media is going to be extremely expensive. Um, I think that as, as our behaviours lean way more towards online, um, you'll find there'll be companies like Coca-Cola or Red Bull or whoever, or even Apple, just being like, OK, Facebook, we're going to buy all of your advertising for these particular interests. And then when it comes to us trying to type in these interests as the independent human being on, onto Facebook, it will be like, this is reserved, this is reserved, this is reserved. And you'll find something like Apple's paid 80 million to get additional interests of like people that are interested in Apple iMacs, for example, or people that are interested in computing or anything like that. It's going to happen because it can happen. And it probably should. Um, if you were if you were a, a business like Facebook and Apple turned up and said, we'd like to purchase interests off of you so no one can ever type them into their search bars ever again. And we're going to pay you billions for it. Facebook are going to be like, all right, because they're a business and that's the way it is. I say it should. I feel weird saying that it should. It shouldn't. 
but that's how it's going to go. So now is the time to use social media and spend on it because this this is the Wild West right now. And these these numbers will be a lot higher, a hell of a lot higher later on. And the idea of having a total budget over four days of £10, 16 bucks over four days to reach a potential of 5,200 people over three additional interests. I just I can't see this being the case in 10 years from now. Just no chance. So this is the bargain basement period. This is where this is where we need to be doing these things. And we want to be hoping for for um, the likes of Twitter to come back up, which they have done recently. Um, it's really important to, to point this out because it's it's so key. And these these are things that we need to always remember. Like we have to remember that when we're making work that we that that our work needs to form a, a sense of attraction towards people. So there needs to be things that are attractive to 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 fill to to um, people of particular interests. I can tell you right now that the Amiga community absolutely love Jurassic Park. Why? Because there are there are Amigas in the in the in the room in Jurassic Park. The the guy the um the, the quite large actor with the glasses that's sweating lots in it, trying to like lock down the lock down the the T Rex, and he's like the rents are in the Raptor, blah blah blah. That guy, he he has an Amiga. 3000 or Amiga 4000 on his desk and like the Amiga guys just love it. Jurassic Park, I mean it's a great film, but the Amiga people they see it as like oh. so it's important to know that this is that, okay? And that was a high I think that was a high A flat there just so just so you know. Okay, the big question for filmmakers at this stage of the industry regarding social media is this. So this is the big question, okay? Should I decide Oh, should I dedicate my social media activities to building a brand for my production company with strands shooting off to my several projects throughout my life as a filmmaker? So that's that's an important question to remember to kind of ask yourself because because a lot of people, especially at this level, will will come up with a plan to to produce say four or five short films in the space of an eighteen month period or something along those lines, right? And um, they may think that the best thing to do is to have a dedicated Facebook page to their production uh, to their production company and then just have small pages for the projects as and when those projects are created. That's kind of cool, but you'll get doubling up of audience. You'll have people liking your main page and you'll have people liking your strand off projects. That can be that can be a bit tricky because because what you're effectively doing is that you're is that you're you're kind of um, you're spreading your audience out a little bit too thin. Whereas if you had one central location, you could have them all in that area. Or if you have several process locations, like several project locations, it's really up to you. It's a really tricky one to talk about, but it's but it is it is important. So these are questions you just have to ask. You just have to answer yourself. Unfortunately, there is no right or wrong answer to this, and it's down to personal preference and how much time and effort you want to put into your social media strategies. So should you dedicate your social media activities to building a brand for your production company with strands shooting off to several projects throughout your life as a filmmaker? That's one question. The next question is, if I can just click it, should I focus my full attention on creating dedicated project pages and maybe get to building a production company brand later with the work that has already been developed? Again, another tough question. I don't really know what the answers are to these because we we can't specifically talk about individual careers right now. But if you're if you're interested in in, in getting work out and and focus to it, focusing on several different types of specific interests across across all the uh, the available options to you, then maybe potentially you will want to bring out project pages initially focused on each project individually as you go along without the main page that shoots off it's entirely up to you but it's it's a it's a it's a question you have to ask yourself and it's a question unfortunately you have to answer on your own um so i mean the truth is this all comes down to your personal psychology right so let's look at this personal psychology aspect first of all so your reasons for filmmaking okay really really important why are you making films um, are you making films because 
you want to have this kick-ass production company like Bad Robot and you want to win a few Oscars, you want to kind of like make it in inverted commas, whatever that means, um, or are you making films because you want to change people's lives? Are you making films because you love you love making film? You love you love telling stories. You love telling stories using using the art of film. You love the equipment. You love working with a crew. You love working with actors. You love all these different processes. You love documentaries. Whatever it is, um, what are your reasons for filmmaking? It's it's really important to know this. You need to know yourself, and you need to understand what's going on there. So your life goals, exactly. How does that marry in with your life goals? Do you want to be making money from your film projects on a regular basis? And ultimately, your creative momentum. Your creative momentum. So creative momentum is really, really important. You could start the beginning of your journey with, with should I dedicate my social media building? So with, with a production company in your head. You want to create a production company that makes films. And you have a whole idea ahead of you. You have a whole huge ass plan that's going off into the sunset of you making films. But if that doesn't work with with how you with how you motivate yourself and how you can creatively come up with ideas, you may not come up with six great scripts in a year. You may only come up with one great script per year. You may only come up with one great idea per per 18 months. You need to kind of understand where your creative momentum lies. So if you're if you're if you're the big idea person, but you're not necessarily the hard worker, then maybe you should start small. Maybe you should just focus on the project, on each project one at a time and build that slowly and maybe go back to just doing number two here, which is focusing your sole attention on creating dedicated project pages and then get to building a production company brand later with the work that's already been developed. Um, it's, it's a really important point because so many creatives find creativity extremely exhausting it is it's extremely exhausting having to having to constantly come up with an idea and and your ideas are burning and you're writing or you're or you're concepting or you're or you're out shooting or you're doing post production the whole thing is unbelievably unbelievably exhausting for most people and um, the creative momentum is is really important. You have to understand where that comes from in you, what motivates you, and what the real what the realistic what the realistic output targets are for you and your work. So to daunt or not to daunt, what's daunting and what's not daunting? That's what you have to ask yourself seriously. Is this social media strategy plan ridiculous? Is it? Am I never gonna get this done? Do I just? hate Facebook that much that I just will never be bothered to go on there. You know, am I just daunted by how creepy I find Facebook or do I see the bigger picture? Do I see that there actually is a bigger picture here and that and that it isn't about me. It's about my project. It's about the people that I know will love my project and it's about the people that I know I'm affecting with it. Um, it's important to ask these really serious questions of yourself. What's the biggest weakness nearly all creators possess? Well, yep, it's a huge lack of motivation. Um, it's a massive, a massive problem, um, especially when faced with the harsh realities of the type of work that needs to be done in order to generate a career from their creations. Yep, so true. Um, out of all of the paths available, which of these look like the toughest? This is this is what you have to say to yourself. So be honest. What motivates you? Build a strategy that connects with your boundaries, the negatives, as well as the positives. So every time you're building a strategy for creative output, building a strategy for marketing, building a strategy for social media, building a strategy for getting out of bed and starting that script, you need to play into that strategy, the boundaries, the things that are going to hold you back, the telephone ringing, your your mum giving you a call, um, your your dad coming to fix a fence in your back garden whatever it is there'll be there'll, there will be things that will slow you down on your path um your lack of money maybe maybe it's that um all of these things can be completely and utterly destroyed by having a strategy that works around these boundaries okay there's no reason why you can't make a film without any money if you keep thinking that you need money and you can't buy money to make a film you shouldn't be making a film simple as that your creativity and your drive will get you there. You just have to stop asking other people and start making it yourself. It's as simple as that. I hate to sound so incredibly harsh on this, but 
too many times people always constantly ask, can I have me, 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 please, please, I want this, I want that. I need to find a producer to do that. I need to get this to do that. You don't. You absolutely do not. Flipping Blum didn't need a, pr a producer. Jason Blum didn't need a producer to get Paranormal Activity made. So why should you have a producer to get your film made? Maybe you're making the film at the wrong stage in your career. Maybe, you, maybe you're making the film that you want to make right now at the wrong point in your professional life. You might need to take that film out of this position and push it further forward. Because if you can't find 100k like that to make the film that you want to make, then you shouldn't be making that film. You should be removing that film away from your timeline and sticking it further up and then doing the films that you can make. Because filmmaking is what you need to be doing, not finding money. You need to be going out and making films. And the more films you make, the more money you'll get. It's just the way it is. It's how it works. You make film, you build audiences, producers approach you and you make your next work. That's how it always happens. That's how filmmakers create careers. You can't sit there being like, I'm waiting for the phone to ring or I'm going to go send a million emails today and they're all going to go into someone's inbox and get flushed out at the end of the day. No, you have to make films. You have to keep making. You have to keep creating. And the more you do that, the more you will be happy. <laughs> the more you will be happy, you'll be happy. Ego. Yeah. So um, something I suffer from, of course, uh, I think a lot of people suffer from it, especially creatives. There's ego attached to everything in this industry. So and I'm saying this at this point, because as we go into the into the social media strategy for this, for this, um, for the idea of what we're trying to do, this isn't about you. This isn't about this isn't about James Bradley. When I create my projects and when I put my projects out online, I'm not creating the James Bradley filmmaker page. I'm not doing that. I, it's not about that. The work dictates that success. The work creates that that persona for me if I if I succeed in the work that I create. Too many people are in this business for their egos and it's wrong. You should be in it for the work. The work is key. If you create if you create for other people, then you share that with other people and that is the pat on your back. You don't need to be here I am doing this, blah, 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 blah. We have a lot of um, we have a lot of documentaries, some that we really love, some that we don't like so much. And there's there's sometimes there's a doc, there's there's a certain um, journalist type of documentary that that doesn't sit very well with me. We've, we've screened lots of them because some of them are great. But with me, they don't necessarily work that well. And that's when the journalist has the camera on themselves all the time, asking the question all the time. I know this is hilarious. I've got the camera on me right now. <laughs> I'm an egotistical hypocrite. I can't, I can't, I can't deny that with my Superman mug. Um, the the most important thing here to, to understand is that is that the ego, an ego is seen and rarely enjoyed. So try your hardest to be humble. Try your hardest to make it more about the project, more about the themes, more about the specifics, and more about the audience. And then you can write really clever social media strategies that that look great and 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 work. Um, the more you say me, I, I did this, I succeeded in getting the crew together. We we did this. We did that. I'm the person in the photograph going, you know, it's, it's not it doesn't work. People, it doesn't wash very well with people. Um, they always say never bullshit a bullshitter. Um, I can bet you a million million billion squillion pounds that producers have egos and a bullshitter producer and a bullshitter filmmaker will never work together because the bullshitter filmmaker will sniff out the bullshitter producer and the bullshitter producer will sniff out the bullshitter filmmaker that's how it works um really really important to make sure that you know that okay so now that we've all had a word with ourselves <laughs> let's get down to business yes <laughs> Contacts page is the central point. Every page should be seen as a route to your contacts, contacts us page. So contact us page. So every website should have a contact page. So if you have a website for your film, just stick a contacts page on there, make it the first page that arrives so um, people can stick their email addresses in. The best form of online marketing is still email. It's still email, 100%. Email wins hands down for, for, for marketing. 
Yes, social media helps to get you email addresses and get you likes and follows and posts on pages. But a person seeing your trailer on Facebook, clicking a link and going to your website and entering their e email address to be told when your film is available to watch online or in their city or whatever, that's the win. That is the win. You need to get them to do that, okay? You've got to go through the contacts page, they've got to enter their email address and they have to do it that way. Or else, or else you've kind of failed in your, in your targets because you need to be getting email addresses, contacts page all the time. But of course, like in all social media, there's a contradiction to this rule because social media kind of fights against this slightly. Social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and, and uh, all the others, I can't think of any others. Yeah, there's loads more. TikTok, gosh, um, there's tons. They all, they all have a, 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 an inset rule, and the rule is this. So we call it the golden threads. So we have things called golden threads in our organization, and this, this is one which is absolutely key with regards to social media marketing. And it's remember, content that keeps a user inside the platform is automatically made more visible by the platform. So the platform here, say for example, is Facebook. If we wrote a post on Facebook that told everybody about the film that we're making next week, we can't wait, we're working with these people, you tag them all, you tag all the people that you're working with on the post, and you say, it's really great, here's a picture of a bunch of people smiling, yada yada yada, and you post that, that's one post. And then you post another one that says, everybody click here to go to our, the gallery on our, on our website. Here's the gallery on our website where you'll be able to check out the pictures from this week's shoot and all the people involved. Those two posts, the one that keeps, that keeps the user that's viewing the post on Facebook is the one that will be seen by more people on Facebook. There was a South by Southwest um, talk very recently by a guy that makes AI for for his own company. He's a, I can't remember his name, but look, but look it up. It's called, um, do we live in a simulation? Um, South by Southwest talk. You can find it on YouTube. It's pretty easy. Let me see if I can find it on here actually. And I'll stick it in the comments. Um, it's a really interesting talk and it's, it's one of the most important things that he talks about. Um, South by Southwest, are we living in a simulation? Here we go. Jailbreak in the simulation with George Hotz. Okay, so copy link address. I'll just stick this in the chat right now. Okay, so watch that later on. It's really interesting. But something that he points out halfway through the um, the conversation, uh, the conversation, the presentation, is that when he first started working at Facebook as an engineer, um, they said to him on day one, here's a clock. And there was a clock above, above their head with like a digital numbers and stuff. And they said, this number needs to be going up all the time and that's your job you need to make sure that this number goes up and what was that number the average amount of hours that a normal user stays on facebook or goes on facebook a day so it's very important to remember that that is facebook's priority to keep users on facebook so knowing that it's really important to implement certain posts that maintain that kind of power, like that kind of like um, hook, I guess. So Facebook look at you and go, oh, these guys are good. I'll hook you on. Um, you'll notice that the, that the posts that we put in the Facebook network members page and stuff, they don't they don't get many likes if they've got external links on them. That's just something that happens. It's 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 an algorithm that's that's inbuilt. Twitter, Instagram, all of the major social media platforms have this rule. They have to. It's how they survive. So moving forward, so the key elements of social media strategy building. OK, so here we go. Key elements of strategy building. Build a community. OK, build a community. Really, really important. Let every get encourage everybody to talk to one another, get them to talk to each other, get them to feel like they're supporting one another. You can't just have a page of people constantly going, here's my film, here's my film, here's my film, here's my which is like the network members page at the moment, which is annoying sometimes. We need to be doing way more talking on there, way more encouraging of each other. You've got to you've got to give before you get. You can't just keep posting stuff about yourself all the time and expect expect people to constantly be talking to you. If you're always posting, you're boring. So it's important for you to engage with others, encourage conversation, tag people in comments to get the conversation flowing. Say, I don't know. I don't know about this, but perhaps at 
Um, Lauren Tiffany will know something about this. Perhaps at Chris Roast will know something about this question and bring people in. Bring people in from your followers base so they can all talk to each other and you can build a community. Really, really important. OK, talk about something new each time you post. So every time you're posting to your page, keep it fresh, keep it new, keep it interesting. Talk about stuff. You could do something like, this is Graham, our lighting guy. He's amazing because of blah, 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 blah. And he does this, 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 this. You can just do 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 profiles on on each of your crew members. Do things that are just awesome, that, that really, really show a a fresh, a fresh approach and a good, a good like community like driven aspect okay and because communities are attractive there's something that people people require community they really do it's why social media is so incredibly powerful and so incredibly successful um so successful people want community okay get your audience to ask questions of themselves so ask your audience ask them questions that 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 make them question themselves it's really it's really really important that that someone gets value from your page if they're going to your page and they're just seeing a trailer they're just seeing your your bio they're just seeing the synopsis they're just seeing the stuff great if their interests are, are, are genuinely connected to it but if you're asking your followers about their interests as well if you're asking your followers about how they understand things and how they how they perceive things it's only going to make you a better artist because being an artist is all about the understanding of the human consciousness, understanding how humans interact with one another, how they deal with each other on a day to day basis and how they perceive the world will be key in how you shape and strategize your future career in order to build more people like that into your world and get them to support you and support your creative content. Um, really important. Ask your audience to participate in feedback. Encourage interactivity. Very similar to the community aspect, but, but this is more specific and it's tailored towards feedback. Send them some cuts and say, what do you guys think of this cut? Do it. Why not? Let them feel like they have a hand in the creation of your work. They may not have a hand in the creation of it. You may ask them what they think and then just be like, I don't actually want to take any of their advice. But it's cool. You imagine being like, like following a, um, a film that's about something that you really like, like the Amiga, for example. I'm following a film about that, right? And the guy's like, I've got these two cuts of the, of the, of the Amiga loading up. Um, I'm using Workbench 3.1, but I'm thinking of maybe using Workbench 4.5. What does everyone think about that? Can you imagine the geek off that would happen <laughs> on, on the page if that question was poised? Like you want to have, you want to have, that kind of like, I think this, no, I think that, oh, I think that. And then and then you just you just leave them hanging so they can wait and see what you actually decided to do later on in your film. This is a great thing to do when you're doing post production. It works brilliantly. It's really important. And it and it's again, it, it generates interconnectivity and it, it builds community. Um, educate. Definitely educate. So you would have had tons of things happen to you on set. You would have had tons of things happen to you when you were writing your script. And it doesn't matter if, you, if you're an expert or not. You've done something. So you're an expert at making that particular type of film. You're an expert at doing that particular type of thing. That particular type of work is, 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 is key to you and it's something that you've always done. So there's no reason why you can't, you can't educate and tell people about it and, and explain how things work. Maybe you're particularly handy with a particular type of black magic camera. Maybe you maybe you really enjoy, really, really enjoy getting getting um, a particular type of emotion out of an actor. And it's something that you've really worked on and you've got a really good way of doing it. And you want to share that with people. Do it. Post a video blog onto your Facebook page that tells people how to do that sort of stuff. They will love it. And if you can twist it into aspects of their interests, you're on to a winner. Um, share funny moments and stories, etc. Yeah, do it. Share funny moments. Share things that happened that were really hilarious. Share how you got to this point as a filmmaker. Not being too egotistical, mind you, but make sure that the funny stuff is good. Make it, make it, make it interesting and funny and just silly and just, you know, always share a joke. And give focus to those that comment regularly and like what you do. Yeah, so always give focus to them. Write a po write a post just off the fly and be like at Graham, um, 
Graham, I really want to know what you thought about uh, Stranger Things Season 2. I know that you're a fan of Stranger Things Season 2, I am too. What did you think? If other people see you involving other followers, they're going to want to be... I was about to say they're going to want to be touched by you too. They want to. They're going to want to be. They're going to want to be interacted with this in the same way. So there'll be like a weird kind of fight for attention, which is something you really want because you're building a fan base. You get it. You're building a fan base. So having that happening, and this can be for businesses. This can be for anything. Anything. The genius that did this was Steve Jobs. He did a fantastic way of getting of getting people to kind of interact with each other in a way that people had never done before. He would have he would only ever he would only ever announce new products internally at Apple to other people. That would only ever happen at Apple. He would avoid things like E3 and um, the big the big computer shows in Las Vegas. He would avoid all of those. He would keep it all in house. So all the people that were invited were like Apple fans and they would get like seats from row like 50 backwards and everyone from row 50 forwards on this huge in this huge auditorium at Apple would be Apple employees and the rest would just be fans. And then he did this amazing thing where he where he um, got people to to sign up for the Genius Bar if you had a broken Macintosh and you would have to queue up outside your, the, the Apple store in the morning to go in to get your broken Mac fixed. Every day there's a queue outside an Apple an Apple store for for, for broken stuff. If you're driving past Apple, the Apple store on Regent Street and you see the Apple store with a queue outside, you're thinking, oh, is there a new watch out or something? He's so clever and he was so clever. And and that was that was all about generating these fans, a fan of a brand, a fan of a brand. It is crazy, but that's what they've done. He, he did that. And it's, it's amazing to still see. Um, but yeah, so do it. Give focus to those that comment regularly and like what you do. And, and this is another one. These are the two. These are the two most important points, actually. They're at the bottom, but they are definitely the most important. Be active on other on other on other pages dedicated to similar output as your genre, themes, styles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can't just you can't just use social media just to get followers. You can and you should. This is it's weird. It's one of those contradictions again, right? But if you if you have a page and your page is your production company, for example, or your project, your film project, and you don't have a list of other pages that you like on the side, then you're not doing it right. You need to have pages on the side that you link to that other people will come to your page and they'll associate the pages that they're on with your page. Um, take Dust, for example, Dust's Facebook page, a science fiction, a science fiction online distributor that are, that are based on YouTube. They're huge. They're a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant entity. I think they're fantastic. They're really great. They're really they're doing fantastic things for the industry. Um, go check out their Facebook page and then look at the pages that they like. Go and look at their YouTube page and look at the pages that they like. Dust, D-U-S-T, and just see see what they're up to. They're very active on other pages. They comment, they share, they like stuff. They go on other people's pages and they're constantly posting similar output. It's how you'll be seen. You'll go onto other pages as your page and you can comment, you can like, you can share, you can bring people across, provided you're sticking to that golden thread of keeping people on the platform. And this is kind of Facebook heavy, but it exists for all, all the other types of social media as well. You're building, you're building an interweb of, of people that understand that you are active and you care and you're dedicated to other people, to, to, the, to, to the particular themes and genres and styles of the stuff that you're doing. OK, and it just all boils down to the final point here, which is be the follower you want to have. The follower that you want on your page, you kind of have to be on other pages as well. Um, you give and you get. That's really important. OK, so have a clear strategy. Stick to it for a set period of time and schedule ironclad review days once those periods have elapsed. This is important. Um, there can be too much tinkering on social media. You can create you can create a social media plan that goes for a whole week. Um, we'll look at that in a second. And you could be like, right. And then on and then on Sunday, I'm going to review it. And then it'll get to Sunday and you would have reviewed it probably 50,000 times because you just keep tinkering. You keep thinking, oh, I'll do something different today or I'll do that. This news article came out or this happened, that happened. You've got to stay away from tinkering because you're never going to be able to measure it. You're never going to be able to see what actually worked and what didn't work unless you 
create a strategy, implement it, and then do it for a few days, a good few days, maybe even more than a week, and then you go back to a review and you look at how it's done. You look at the posts, you look at the things that have worked, and then you re-strategize based on that. So create a daily plan with a review set, with a review date set. Don't try to tinker too often and set a weekly goal for follower count, post likes, and responses. You can also chuck in there as well, um, contacts page landings and email address um, people people entering their email addresses onto your contacts page basically um, always always look to try to deliver value talk about things your followers want to know about always look to be active go outside of your project and find your peers build your own beat generation so find your peers so this is also a good point not just going on to pages that 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 live within the same themes and the same styles and and uh, and ideas that your film is talking about, but also other filmmakers. Go on other filmmaker pages and be the follower that you want on their page and do it. Create the beat generation, create a bunch of you that all get each other creatively and all help each other out. Their audience after all is your audience and you're not in competition. You're building something together. Some of the most successful breakthrough Hollywood Hollywood filmmakers in the last 20 years have been a troop, okay? The Will Farrell guys, the guys that do um, Seth Rogen guys, those guys, um, mainly comedy because it because because comedy is such a clear is such a clear way to find each other creatively. But we can hark back all the way to Tim Burton and Johnny Depp if we like. You know, creative connections are really important. And if you're not using social media for anything at all, you should be using it for at least this going out and finding people that you creatively connect with um, and showing them your work and they show you their work. Do it. If you're, if you're part of a Liftoff Online Film Festival, for, exa for example, go and find work that you really like and message those filmmakers. Tell them that you want to work with them. Work with them. Be their first AD. Do whatever. Read their first script. Read their next script. Read, the, read, their, read their first draft. Have a look at, their, at their, um, their rough cuts and give them help on stuff. Like, you can't you can't work in this industry alone. You can't be a lone wolf and succeed. Um, you'll end up you'll end up in, in all sorts of problems if you try to do that. You need to build your peer group, your peer groupage. And it can't just be your mates down the road. It needs to be people that are generating work that is of a similar quality to you and is of a similar standard to you and work that you feel that you feel mildly, mildly, that you feel inspired by. You can feel mildly inspired by it, but you need to feel inspired by it. And it's, it's important to get that going. It really, really is. So if you're not a filmmaker with 10 filmmaker friends, then you're slowing yourself down. OK, you've got to get you've got to find these people. OK, very important. So an example of a social strategy, so of a film social strategy. Okay, so here we go. So first of all, create sub-strategies for each period of change within your project's life. So you're going to have periods of change within your subjects, within your project's um, life. So concept announcement, that's the beginning of your of your strategies. Um, you then have a post a pre-production strategy, sorry. And then you have a production strategy whilst you're shooting. And then you have a post-production social media strategy for after you've shot and you're in post-production. So when you could send out things like feedback and stuff. And then promotional strategy for trailers, festival screening strategy after that, and then a sales strategy that follows that onwards. Okay, so you you need to have an individual social media strategy for all of these sub, these sub periods of change. Um, they're sub strategies, I guess, of the main overall strategy. How many times do I wanna say strategy today? Strategy, 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 strategy. God, I can hardly talk. Okay, so Monday, share your project's mission for the week. So on Monday, do a post. It doesn't need to go anywhere else other than inside Facebook or inside Instagram or inside Twitter. Share your project's mission for the week. Tuesday, spend an hour going anywhere and everywhere online apart from your social media page. Forums, Facebook pages, join the now. You can go check it out without trying to sound too spammy. Go and have a look at that. You know, just just... Provided that you're, you're, that you're providing valuable comments and valuable insights on other people's pages and on forums and things, and, and it's within the interests of those people that you're talking to, they'll go and check out your work. They'll go check out your page. They'll enter their details. They'll definitely, they'll de they definitely will. That's how, that's how you actively find followers that, are, that will be ironclad followers, okay? 
Um, the paid advertising works really well, but this is how you do it organically, okay? You can't just sit there and wait for people to arrive on your page. You have to go out there and be part of these themes that your films that your film that your films are talking about. Okay, Wednesday, post a video update. Update on the progress of the film and end with some valuable advice for your followers. So just a video blog. Just a video blog, really simple. Just do it. You're a filmmaker. You can post a video blog. Do it. And then Thursday, highlight work made by others, your peers. So Thursday, always look to support other people. Supporting other people is absolutely key. It turns you into a magnet for luck. You become a magnet for good luck. Every time you help somebody else, something just arrives to you. It just happens. We all know this, yet we never really think about it or implement it properly. So every Thursday in your social media strategy, you highlight work that's made by others and you talk to your peers about it. You, these are people of your peers or whatever, and you talk about why it's great. If you've got those nine friends, say, so 10 of you all filmmakers, you've got nine of those friends, and it's maybe two or three weeks into your friendship of you all together chatting about the, the projects that you're all going to make together, for example. Um, if you've already got a social media page of, say, 100, maybe 200 followers, and you post one of those nine filmmakers' films onto your page saying, guys, please check out this other filmmaker. They're really great. They've, they've tackled these themes, these things, these themes that I'm really interested in. And I think my followers might be interested in, in too. I'd love to get your feedback and see what you guys think. Here's a link to their work. Now you can either do a link to their work or a link to their project. If you do a link to their work, you might not get too much coverage on Facebook, but if you do a link to their project on Facebook, then you will. And then that person that follows you and the other eight people in your Beat Generation gang of filmmakers are going to be like, yeah, that's a good person. They've just, they've just shared, they've just shared Gary's work. That's so rad. Thank you so much, Gary. Oh, thank you so much, you, for sharing Gary's work. That's wicked. You know, it just, it, it creates, it creates momentum, and then they, they'll do the same for you. And eight of them will all share your work on their page, and you'll get all of their audience. You get exposure. It's how it works. This is how it works. And if you care about these people as well, if you care about the work that they're in, that they're outputting, if you really genuinely care about it, it will be so easy for you to do this. So go out and find people whose work you give a shit about, because then you're going to create a really great, a really great web for audience. OK, really important. So Friday, round off the week with a picture and a funny anecdote. Yeah, Fridays are always good for that. Everyone's feeling Friday. They're always fun about Friday. Always good for a fun anecdote definitely round off the week with a funny picture a meme something that's really cool and get people talking on your on your on your page excuse me <coughs> dry continuous cough no it's not um so round it off with a with a picture and a funny anecdote very very important and then on saturday recommend the work of someone you find inspiring so just a quick post on your phone in the morning saturday morning you're just like here's stanley kubrick's second film um uh, second film, Stanley Kubrick's second film. His first film was Lolita. His second film was, 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 I'm going to go quiet now while I think. His second film was Barry Lyndon. So recommend, recommend Barry Lyndon. It's actually a flipping excellent film. We've got the poster up in our cinema in, uh, in Pinewood. You should totally check that film out. It's great, by the way. <clears throat> really, really good. So recommend the work of someone you find inspiring on a Saturday. Quite, kind of cool. And then on Sunday, chill out. So we're harking back to this now. This is, this is your social media strategy, right? Plain and simple. You can change this. You can do whatever you want with it, right? But you've got to remember the key points. You have to always be building a peer network. You have to be building an audience network of people that are interested in the themes that you tackle. And you've got to be doing more actively on other pages, informing them of your page, bringing people back to you, building stuff, doing paid advertising if you can, and, and just going through the process of these particular ones beforehand. So the concept announcement, the pre-production, the production, the post-production, the promotion, the festival screenings, and then the sales strategy, okay? So always bear that in mind, okay? And it's vital to become more responsibility with your enthusiasm for gaining knowledge to better equip your output as an artist. This is key. We always talk about this in these workshops, but become more responsible with your enthusiasm for gaining knowledge to better equip your, your output as an artist. 
too many filmmakers, too many actors leave film school, leave, leave acting school and stop taking lessons. Why? You're, you're never, you're never going to stop learning. You should always learn. Always try and better equip yourself. Gain as much knowledge as you can. Watch films by auteurs. Watch films by your peers. Watch people that are on the next run up from you and see what they've done differently. Understand how films are made. Understand how things work. Great place to start is Vice's Guide to Film. Look at all of the, the, the director's rundowns. So you can discover new director's work. Really great. And that will get you into the cinephile mindset. But also other people. Go out and look at other filmmakers do things, especially now we're all flipping sat down indoors doing nothing all day. Going, I'm definitely not doing nothing all day, but definitely go out there and get and get as many as many examples of 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 um, filmmaking knowledge that you can and just just better equip yourself as an artist. You will. It's, it's a great, great thing to do and you should do it. The filmmakers that rise from the dust are always those that do as much as they can to better understand their audiences. So always get into the mind of your audience. Know from the beginning, who is this film for? Specifically, specifically, who is this for? Okay, and then work from there. And then doing social media strategies, approaching marketing, all that stuff is so much easier when you know who your audience is. And it can't just be everyone, like I said at the beginning of the thing, it can't be just everyone. It needs to be specific, people that you that you know are are interested in xyz and you know that they could that they will find your work inspiring informative educational challenging whatever you've got to find those people and you have to build it in so always always try to understand your audiences even if your film fails even if it gets into no festivals and it doesn't do very well try to understand why that happened that the the judge of a film festival is an audience member. They are an audience member. Why did they not connect with it? What's happening? Come out of it. Just because your mum and your gran and your nan and your auntie all loved your film doesn't mean that the rest of the world is going to. So try to get your head into the idea of, of other people's perspectives. How do other people see the world? It's key to success. And attend more festivals. Attend more film festivals. I'm going to say this, but You'll get to meet people, you'll get to watch work that you'll be inspired by, you'll get to see work by people that are at the same situation as you, they're in the same position as you, you'll get to see things that you'll be like, oh my God, you'll watch Q&As and you'll be like, that was a, that's a great idea, I never thought of that. So attend more film festivals, okay? And you can't expect an industry to support you if you don't support it. So how many film festivals have you been to this year? How many did you go to last year? How many film festivals do you expect to get into? If you expect to get into 10 film festivals in the next 12 months, how many film festivals are you going to attend in the next 12 months? Don't say all the ones that you get into because that's selfish. You have to support the industry. So think about it. The more festivals you'll go, you'll go to, the more likely you will be of, go, of getting into festivals. We, Liftoff, love it. Love it when filmmakers that we that we. Filmmakers, we never reject filmmakers. Filmmakers whose films we may not have put into a program, if they come up to us at that particular festival because they live locally or they just got a train down or they've got family in the area or whatever it is, if they come, come to London Liftoff, for example, one of the final festivals in our season, in our festival calendar for Liftoff, and they say, I didn't get in, um, but I've seen the films tonight and I thought they were really good and I... I just wanted to meet you guys and just and just sort of say here I am and and let you know that I exist. Um, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> My response to the people that do this every time is, "Wow, that's brave. Well done. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being so incredibly humble and actually coming and supporting the rest of your fellow filmmakers because they are they're the rest of your fellow filmmakers. That stands out so much." And then when that filmmaker sends us their work, they directly send an email to me. They tell me that it's submitted. I look at the film and I like think, flipping out, that's a good film. And then it goes through the platform. And then if it gets screened, we've, we've created a connection with that filmmaker. And it's so important. And if you're, a fil if you're that filmmaker, you've just created a connection with a pretty big festival. So it works like that hand in hand. And it's really important. 
to get, I say, pretty big festival. We're not massive. I am, I, I know where we are. I've got to be humble too. <laughs> Harking back to the ego. Um, but yeah, it's important to make sure that you know that 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 attending more festivals that you don't get into will really help you to get into more festivals. It just will. That's how it works. So attend more film festivals. We're currently running Sessions 2020 online film festival at the moment. It's uh, it's ram packed with content. Um, it's fantastic. Each program's eight pounds, which is ten dollars. And on every program, that's around 100 films or a whole bunch of feature films. So we've got feature films and five packed programs of short film from around the world. The link is in the description below. So check out the link below and go and have a little look at it. Here's a roundup of the scores that we've got so far. We're now hitting a really busy weekend on this on this um, particular festival. So it always just ramps up and we get lots and lots of views, lots and lots of votes. So I'm just going to do a quick roundup of the votes so far that we've had as of around about eight o'clock this morning when I did the count. So um, right now we've got features and the features page, if I just go in up here and have a little look on my little tab that we've got. So we've got I Am Josh Brockington, directed by Chris Chase, currently in first place. We have Parallel Policy, uh, Policy by... Shuane, Shuane Bordy, they're in second place. We have My Island by Anthony Monaghan. We have a tie in fourth place and a tie in fifth place. Um, I've, I've highlighted My Island here um, as, a, as a film that's, that's sticking out. It's, 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 really, it's really beautiful and it works, it works great with the aesthetic of Ireland against each other. Um, it's, it's great. Just the synopsis here. So Tony is from the beautiful west of Ireland. Due to the poor economy, he had to leave home at the age of 15 to find work abroad. After many hard years, he finally, find, finally found success in America. Now he is returning to his homeland in search of answers. He travels the country and talks to Irish people from all walks of life, from a homeless Dubliner to John McGuinness. My Island, My Island exposes the corruption responsible for economic migration, the wrongful eviction of thousands of homeowners and the growing homeless crisis. It tells a story shared by countless Irishmen and women who, like Tony, unwillingly left their home. Very important, very important, and very interesting film. I highly recommend you guys check it out. And yeah, that's 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 uh, the, the features page. Then we move on to program number one. And on program one, we have the Bananas Foster in first place currently. And then we've got a tie for second, a tie for third, and a tie for fourth. And that is um, in so if we just read them out. So in second place, we've got Season Over, Sugar Morning, One Closed Door. Third place, we have Incomplete Venereal Disease Anthology, Look Up, Ball. Japa, Japa Murashara, 404 File Not Found. Cool name, that one. The Sound of Birds Stops the Noise in My Mind. Shift, On Time, and Don Briar. That, that's, uh, that's all the films from first to third place. And this is Banana Foster's here that I've highlighted, which is currently in top place with only four votes. So all can change, really, with just four votes in it. I mean, it's it's crazy. So any film in this in this in this particular program could make it through to the next round. Um, the synopsis for this one is a grieving Caro family must come to terms with burying their father after his funeral with a shocking revelation, fear them further apart or challenge them to come together. So will a shocking revelation tear them apart or challenge them to come together? Sounds great. So number two, program on no, no, program number two, we've got The Doors Between Us by Paolo Pereira. Let Me In by Paolo Pereira again. Very prolific filmmaker. Good to see. Pinstripe Rose by Sasha Claxon. Buzz by Glenn McClellan Philly and Catch a Rat by Ronan Burke. Um, and it's looking pretty good at the moment. We've got we've got a lot of votes coming in here. Um, but yeah, Pinstripe Rose currently in third. We've got Catch a Rat, another film from Ireland. Looking really good on eight votes, fifth place. Um, anything can happen. It's a short one, this one. Three minutes, 27 seconds. So the synopsis is a music video for the band Gilbert or the unfathomable loneliness of the deep space prospector. I love it. Following a sheriff chasing a team of miscreant rascals to make them pay for their crimes oh cool and there's a little youtube link down the bottom there so yeah definitely check that check that out guys moving on to program three we have program three we've got extraordinary people the burns victims and the bothamus the one eye and i win in second place then we have hockage and hands talk in third place and coast phase one pied piper and don't touch in fourth place and help in fifth place with four votes so there's still tons to play for here on program number three. And Help, which is from Kyrgyzstan, directed by Dastin Nurbek Ulu. 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 Yeah, Dastan Nurbek Ulu. 
W, <laughs> w, L, U. Uh, so the synopsis is a do documentary film about an ambulance doctor, why they chose to be a doctor, why they keep doing this, and what is inside of their work. What challenged them? Yeah, interesting. So yeah, what challenges them? It, very, very interesting, interesting uh, thing there. That would be cool. So it's a 13 minute short. So definitely going to be checking that one out called Help by, from Kyrgyzstan. Awesome. I love the fact that we get films from all over the world on these programs. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so program number four for sessions, we currently have Into the, Into the Dying of the Night, which is in first place. That's directed by Alexandra Berthran. We have Callum Matthews' film Gazette. And then we have a tie for third place, which is The Last Delivery, Understand and The Exchange. And then we have fourth place, we've got Darkness, Roxanne and Cherry. And then in fifth place, with two votes each, we have Paper, The Twins, Pendapu Akaku, uh, Treasure, The Enlightener, Kaopan, Malam, uh, Mal Malamado, Impertro, The Game, Choose Your Fight, The Call, Final Call, and I'm Fine. I tell you what, I feel like such an ignorant Englishman every time I read out words that are from different countries. I do apologise. I'm awful at, the, at, at pronouncing things. I'm really sorry. Um, so that the... Uh, the, the uh, focus that we want to put on today on programme four is the film cassette. So synopsis, occupied France, 1944. Cool. Good start. A German soldier, Frederick, is on a scouting mission for a reconnaissance unit when he and his partner are ambushed. Fred escapes the conflict, wounded after his partner is killed, and runs through a forest. He runs for a while before coming across an isolated farmhouse where he passes out. He wakes up to find his wounds bandaged and a French woman, cassette, sitting across the room. Watching him at gunpoint, he explains he ran away from the battle and Gassette tells him he can stay until he recovers. Then he has to leave. She later <laughs> brings him clean bandages so she can have so she can change his dressings. But when he struggles, she changes them for him. Uh, right. I'm not going to read the whole of this synopsis because I don't want to give away the film. Um, the synopsis here is basically giving us the entire movie. Um, I would definitely skip the synopsis at this point and just head straight into there because it does sound good. So that's cassette, which duration is 13 minutes 34, and that's on program number four. And it's currently sat in second place with six votes. Okay, and then the next one is a movie without an ending. So we've got a movie without an ending, which is on program number five. A movie without an ending is currently in second place. First place is the, is the disappearance and sudden reappearance of Peter Witt by Andreas Menegran. And that is currently in first place with seven votes. Then we have a movie without an ending, which is the film that we're putting on focus at the moment here. And then in third place, we have a tie with Unstable, Diagnosis, Esberg, Crime Family and Jessica. And then in fourth place, we've got Cops and Monsters Uprising, Love and Drug Life. That's on three votes in fourth place. And then in fifth place, we have a whole bunch of films. Silver City, The Cardinals Fan, Monsters, Staring at Infinite, The Founding of Youth, Acceptance, Sex on the Beach, The Portraits, A Very Short Trustees on anthrop Anthropology, Gr uh, Man, uh, Gray Nan. Uh, 9J, Dreams, Riot, Halfetti, and Certainly Not Guilty. That They're all tied in fifth place with two votes each. And the film we want to talk about today on program number five is a movie without an ending, which is directed by Matteo Valentelli, and its two failed actors take part in the Performance 2019 Challenge, a well-known online challenge where the two actors will have to perform seven different movie genre during a, li during a live streaming for the chance to win a life-changing prize. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, great. Um, that duration is nine minutes, three seconds. Nine minutes, three seconds. And it's the um, 68th film on the 107 film program at number five of the liftoff session. So yeah, be sure to check that one out. And that's it for the films. So there we go. That's the films on, this, on, the, on the sessions. And I just want to kind of come back now to talk a little bit more about the mission plans for, for your career in general, um, going past the social media side of things and moving into the kind of work that we really sort of focus on here at Liftoff. And this is the stuff that we want. We want people to really, really, really push here. So create a mission plan after COVID-19. OK, so this is during and after COVID-19. All right. So search for the local film festival slash screenings in your area and attend them. Number one. OK, doesn't have to be Liftoff, of course. Just go to just go to film festivals and watch the work that's being created by your peers. Volunteer some of your time to help others in their projects as well. Engage with filmmakers whose work you find similar to your own. Absolutely. 
Engage with filmmakers whose work you find on the next run up from yours. Yep, we talked about that earlier on. Engage with filmmakers whose work you find inspiring and discover true indie film content online and pay for it and share it because we can build an industry. We can build an industry together if we are paying for the for the work that we're that we're that we're pushing through. It's really important that we that we get that going. So keep working on those ideas, build a stable and reliable creativity engine. And remember, you are not one film. OK, so send us your concepts to lift off and we'll take them to the Cannes Film Festival to road test. This is a really good one. So Cannes been pushed a little bit further back now from July. Oh. But that doesn't mean that film markets won't be happening this year. The Liftoff Global Network go to every single film market. We can we can just about afford to. And we go there because we want to be one one better than a film festival. We want to be 10 better than a film festival, in fact. And after festival screenings, what happens? You're left alone to sell your work. Well, not anymore. If you screen with Liftoff you, and you're a professional member on our Liftoff platform, you can send us, I think you can even send us your concepts if you're an intermediate as well. I'll let Claire or Lauren clarify that in the comments section, um, in, the, in, the, in the chat section. But yes, we will take your concepts, we will take your concepts to the film market to road test with producers, with buyers, with whoever. Just send them through to us. So following last year's successes, we are again heading to Cannes to represent the projects of our professional network members to bring them to the next step in their career. We will be meeting with over 50 sales agents, producers and VOD platforms such as Amazon and Netflix. We've actually got meetings already set up over the telephone with Amazon and Netflix to get this stuff sorted. And a couple more VOD platforms as well. Disney Plus, obviously, because we're based at Pinewood Studios. Um, Disney have a massive presence at Pinewood. Um, so that helps us big time. Um, so, yeah, a big part of our membership entitles you to use this market service every year free of charge. So if you're a professional network member or an intermediate network network member, you have a production support, a, pro a producer rep effectively in us for free. We don't take a fee if we get you a deal. We don't do anything like that. We just we just we just represent you and help you push your projects. That's what being in the Liftoff Global Network is. OK, we help you sell your work. So are you a filmmaker looking to launch your career? Professional membership. Here we go. So for one hundred and eighty nine dollars a year, you get free submissions on Film Freeway to all of the Liftoff festivals and our showcases. You get career road mapping sessions. You can join us in the audience when we finally get back to our cinema space and we have our audience back. You can come and join us. We have a, a live jobs dashboard that's constantly being updated. And we have film market representation at all of the major film markets, not just the, the Marche de Film in Cannes. We do AFM in Santa Monica. We do EFM in Berlin. We do, we do all of the major film markets. MIPCOM back at Cannes again for the TV stuff. We're touching on all of the film markets going forward. And it's really important that you get your work seen by the people that may potentially purchase it because then you can make money as a filmmaker. So head to liftoff.network forward slash membership for more information about that. And also production launch workshops. So if you've got a, a, um, a project at the moment that you're looking to get off the ground and you want some advice on on how to set it up for the market, how to get it ready for the market, how to reach audiences, how to build social media, we have a, a whole bunch of free work workshops available via our website. Just go to our website, which is www.liftoff.network and head there and just register and you'll get you'll get the videos sent to you and you'll be able to engage with them. Really, really handy if you want to if you want to build if you want to build your repertoire and understand how the film markets actually work. And that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Let's have a look. We'll just have a look at the see how the, everything's going in the chat room at the moment. Um, I think we've got some uh, members of staff in there some doing some fantastic stuff. Um, let's have a little look. I'm working on my next project in these days, writing the script and the management and social media facts like economic problems and to estoy past the pandemic to record outside. I think in the summer. Great. That's good to know. That's really good to know. Thank you very much for that one. Hi, I just started it to start the channel specifically to say hello. So hello, listening, interesting, learning. Great one, Edwards. Thank you. Uh, Ed Edwards. Thank you very much for that post. Um, Chris Roaster said 50 students build the set pieces I needed for my short film Elysium is like a win-win situation. They have a cool assignment and I had set pieces for a good price. Yeah, perfect. That's great stuff. That's really good to hear. So this is the sort of reason why 
filmmakers need to talk to each other because Chris Roast has has a fantastic story about how he got 50 students to basically build all of this all of his set pieces. Um, this kind of stuff is absolutely valuable. So please, 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 like talk to each other, engage with one another. Okay, great. So that's it by the looks of things. Really nice to see the activity in the chat room. This post will be up. This video will be up forever now. It's, it'll exist on our channel. Please check out our other workshops that we did for the, the previous weeks. We've got how to find producers. We've got how to engage with more audiences. We've got so many things. So definitely go check them out and see see how you guys see how you guys do and uh, yeah leave comments in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going thank you very much guys stay safe and adios